you. I suppose we are now in the panel stage. Yes, sir. We are the panelist on stage, and you can start. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, before giving the floor to our chair, uh, Kiran Kuchi, I will just briefly uh, remind uh, our uh, invited uh, speakers. Uh, so, this uh, this panel uh, uh, will. Uh, we will have uh, between one hour and one hour 15 minutes for this uh, panel. So we will have the time to uh, ask and respond to uh, many questions. Uh, so uh, in this panel uh, moderated by uh, Professor Kiran Kuchi, there will be, uh, of course, our two keynote speakers, Jose Marcos Camara Brito from uh, 5G Brazil, uh, Secretary General 5G Brazil, Federico uh, Bocardi, uh, Principal Technology Advisor of COM. We will have also uh, Mr. Jaspreet Singh, uh, Director and Founder of uh, Kirat Communications. Uh, we will have uh, Mr. Sandeep Agrawal, uh, Team Leader at CDOT in, uh, in India. Uh, we will have also uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, Mr. D.K. Agrawal. Uh, Mr. Agrawal is uh, 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 senior GM at BSNL. Uh, then uh, we have uh, Mr. Tarek Abdrahman. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tarek uh, represents uh, here, he's an engineer representing here the Malaysian uh, Telecom uh, Standard uh, uh, Bureau. Um, I don't think I have forgotten uh, somebody. And of course, uh, uh, our, uh, our uh, colleague uh, Balaji uh, Rangaswamy, uh, co-chair of the session, will also uh, be on stage to intervene uh, or respond to some questions if needed. Uh, and uh, uh, for uh, Kiran Kuchi, uh, as you as you like, uh, Kiran, uh, I could also uh, relay you or help for uh, uh, questions during during this uh, long panel uh, uh, under your uh, convenience. So, uh, without uh, waiting, I give the floor to uh, our uh, moderator. Of this uh, uh, of this panel, Professor Kiran Kuchi, uh, with the panelists. So, uh, Kiran, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jean Pierre. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to say a few words. Uh, Jean Pierre, please feel to interject, comment, uh, and uh, whatever you would like to say during this panel discussion. And the same goes to uh, my colleague uh, Balaji as well. Okay. Um, so as agreed, uh, we will follow a format uh, of uh, primarily uh, a set of questions uh, that I have already written down and communicated to all of you. We'll go through these questions, and for each question, we can do we can collect opinions in a round robin fashion. I will moderate that. We have enough time. I think I believe uh, we have 10, 12 questions and uh, we have some questions in the last minute. I have included them too. Before uh, uh, we begin with this, uh, perhaps we can take uh, a couple of questions uh, on the presentations, if there are any. Um, and, uh, and of course, we can also take these questions uh, uh, during the QA session. And also, I would like to give a chance to uh, Dr. D.K. Agarwal uh, from the state operator BSNL. Uh, he would like to show a few slides, so I would like him to present very briefly. Um, so, uh, the, so the order is uh, some questions and answers on the presentations. That's what just made, followed by uh, Mr. Agarwal's presentation, followed by the Q&A, which we have. So I would leave the um, discussion open now. Uh, if there are any questions on any of these presentations, we can leave the panelists to ask these questions. Thank you.
So you want anyone to start, sir? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, no. Is it uh, MCRK? Do you have any preference, like who has to start first? No, no, no. Please go ahead. Uh, I mean, there are going to be a few questions. Hopefully, please go ahead. Yeah. I still don't see a question, so I will put the question to uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Jose Marcos. Uh, so, Professor, uh, I have seen some very impressive uh, final result in your uh, presentation. 50 kilometer cell radius, you achieved 100 megabits per second. What is the secret sauce there? The, the secret is a, is a, a, a set of uh, uh, technologies, including uh, uh, a new waveform. You, you, we are using uh, GFDM uh, as wave. A polar code is also to transmit the not only the the, the control information like in the uh, five uh, three GBP standard, but also the the data uh, information and uh, of course uh, we were working in, in a, a low frequency about 700 uh, megahertz uh, our, our solution is is is, is based on uh, tv white space white space technology to use the the tv white space in huge uh, and you use it in, in the in the base station at uh, 20 uh, watts power. I see. Um, so I have some familiarity with these kind of experiments, which I have done myself. What is the base station height you have considered, Professor? The, 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 the height of base station, I don't have this, this, this data here with me. I can't send you to you after because I'm not the responsible of the Yes, okay. I'm, I'm just the director of the research area. Uh, maybe I have this in my presentation. Let me see. Yeah, please go ahead. So I don't have this detail here. But uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know the number exactly. No problem. We can exchange this offline. No problem. Okay. So any other questions? Um, uh, Okay. Hello, I, I am I am Tariq here. I have a question related uh, to the Mr. Porkadi from Ocom. Can you elaborate further related to 5D shared rural networks in UK? Uh, sure. So look, this is a um, this is a agreement between the four operators and the government that was signed. Uh, a few months ago, and the role of Ofcomia is to report on the progress of, of this agreement. It's going to be, it's going to be um, in, uh, done in, in multiple phases using three different types of sites, sites that are already existing, sites that are part of emerging um, service networks and, and, and new sites. Um, so it's going to be a part of existing sites and a part of new sites. And um, and uh, the objectives are the ones that I presented. So, so is is really the uh, the most uh, uh, amazing number for me is the sixty six percent to eighty percent all operators. So, in eighty percent of the uh, areas, there is going to be geographic coverage from all the operators. Now, I'm speaking of. This agreement is specifically targeting geographic coverage because, as I said, in the UK, coverage in proximity of the premises is is already good. Now, in terms of um, in terms of infrastructure, part of this is about building infrastructure, in particular sites and buckle. Some of these sites are going to be connected via fiber, um, which means that. I'll, it is 4G, but this infrastructure in the future is going to be used perhaps for, for 5G uh, as well. So it's, it, it's really about creating a new infrastructure or increasing the penetration of infrastructure in, uh, in, uh, in very rural areas. 
Okay. Thank you for that. So, uh, I, will, I will have a, a question, uh, Jean-Pierre speaking, for uh, Kiran, for Kiran Kuchi. Uh, Kiran, uh, you explained uh, the uh, TSDSI RIT uh, uh, new uh, 5G remote uh, standard. Uh, we know that uh, the, the, the challenge will be the coming uh, month or, or, or years to make that included in the uh, global uh, 5G uh, standardization process. Uh, so, in, 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 the, in the field of 3GPP, how do you see, uh, uh, how do you see that uh, the next release, very important release of 3GPP release 17, will be likely finalized by end 21 or early 22. Uh, on your point of view, have you already introduced that in release 17 or will it rather for release 18? Ah, thank you, Jean-Pierre. Uh, this has been a discussion uh, uh, ongoing for quite some time. Uh, when we introduce uh, this technology in 3GPP in release of 15, uh, there have been some challenges for the vendors to implement this technology. So it was specified in uh, 3GPP in some uh, in some form, it's not fully cooked, and some enhancements have been made in release 16 uh, of this particular technology, at least a subset of this technology that that is there in TSDSI uh, RIT. However, uh, there has been no support for uh, this technology in the base stations developed by uh, the vendors as per 3GPP release 15 so far. There has been uh, discussions at the PCG uh, um, of 3GPP that perhaps this technology should be you know, included in 3GPP future releases. So there is an item uh, uh, called uh, you know, coverage uh, enhancement uh, as a work item in 3GPP release 17 and uh, some efforts are being made uh, to improve the coverage uh, of uh, 3GPP standard, 5G standard because there are some issues with respect to the coverage uh, not only for, from an Indian point of view but in general uh, coverage issues are there for both urban and rural areas. Uh, so some, some progress has been made but uh, uh, just to answer your question, a direct answer to your question, release 17 does not seem to yet fully uh, include uh, these enhancements of TSD IRIT. I think the door is open, but uh, we may consider release 18 or, or maybe towards the end of release 17. It has to be seen yet. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran, for your uh, response. Quite interesting. Uh, yes, so let's uh, I have a question. Yes, uh, Sandeep, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah, the question is to Mr. Bukadi. So now recently, you know, Ofcom has uh, opened six kilohertz band. So what is his view about, you know, uh, using Wi-Fi to solve some of the remote, uh, you know, uh, problems? Definitely something we are monitoring, in particular technologies like the terahertz, um, uh, proposal by, by Facebook or similar ones based on multi-hop technologies. At the moment, as far as I know, at 60 gigas, we, we may see point to point, point to multi-point, and point to point for fixed links. We haven't seen um, solutions solutions for based based on Wi-Fi, for example, uh, on the 60 gigas is, band. Question is to six gigas. Ah, six gigas, yeah. sorry, six gigas. We recently opened it, uh, I think it was a month ago. It was probably too early to to see pick up for six gigas. I can bring you my uh, experience. I was involved in the works for, uh, for, for five gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz, which was the, we were the first European country that opened the AV access for 5.8 gigahertz uh, a couple of years ago. So, um, Look, we, we see at, we see Wi-Fi has been very important, in particular for uh, for in-premise connectivity. And in fact, something we are, we are monitoring now is the pickup of services like voice over Wi-Fi or SMS over Wi-Fi. 
So for example, uh, we are monitoring while they're doing COVID-19, people are using more voice over Wi-Fi or SMS over Wi-Fi. And it's particularly important because some, some of the services that uh, uh, are related to, to banking, for example, are going by SMS. So the role, the role of Wi-Fi is definitely important, in particular within premises uh, indoor. Specifically, obviously, Skigar's ban is really too is really too early because it was opened, uh, uh, I think, a month ago, a few weeks ago. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I just have an open question. Uh, yeah, please go ahead, Jasper. Yeah, yeah uh, so uh, I would like to ask about the uh, setting up of the te telecom infrastructure, uh, particularly in the case of 5G in the rural areas. And I mean, how much difficult, I mean, how we tackle the problem of like uh, some availability of hours or the, or the manpower, the skills for developing the telecom infrastructure. This is one part. And then Affordability and sustainability is also an issue uh, regarding the same. Uh, so I'd like to ask about this uh, setting up of telecom. Yeah. So I think the best person uh, equipped to answer this question is Mr. Agarwal, uh, who is with BSNL. Uh, he knows probably more of the answers. So let's see if Agarwal ji can uh, take this question. Sir. Sir, you can unmute yourself, sir. Ha. Please repeat the question, please. Yes. Sir, I will uh, rephrase the question. Uh, Mr. Jaspreet Jeff is very keen on understanding the viability of uh, uh, rural uh, cell sites at, at rural locations, both in, in terms of installation, commission, power availability. Uh, uh, and also, you know, going forward from 4G to 5G, maybe the question is, uh, you know, both 5G and 4G, uh, 4G and 5G relevant. Yeah, sure, sure. So at present, the, and the, uh, thank you very much, TSDSI. At present in the Indian scenario, the cost uh, of uh, per tower, which is coming in urban area and uh, compared to rural area, certainly a uh, cost is around uh, two times uh, in the rural area. The reason being that one is the accessibility, second is the non-availability of the commercial power, and third is reaching to the media. So I will be covering all these things in my presentation. I think uh, the same can be covered. And if after that, if I am not, uh, if concern is unanswered, I will again answer the question. Uh, excellent. Uh... Uh, I think that uh, we probably should go back to our schedule. Uh, we have spent about you know 15 minutes on this. Um, I think we we have enough time for uh, questions and answers. We'll definitely address all the questions, uh, uh, and uh, at any given time you can raise them. So I would really like to move on and ask Mr. D.K. Agarwal uh, to give a brief presentation, sir. If we can keep it uh, as short as possible, uh, then we'll move on to Q and A again. Thank you, sir. Sure, 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 Professor Kuchi. So I'm moving to my presentation. Hope you are able to see it. Yes, yes, yes. So as a topic indicated, this rural and remote data connectivity. So I have taken a view of the remote area where the two girls and one boy, they are seeing uh, means uh, they are connected to the world. So I will go with the, some numbers as uh, Mr. Kuchi has already indicated some number, but I will compare with those numbers with the worldwide. So if we go to the population wise, uh, the worldwide population is 7.8 billion, whereas India population is 1.33 billion. And the number of person in rural area and worldwide it is 43.8%, whereas in India it is 65.3%. And the uh, numbers in respect of telecom connectivity in India, total numbers of uh, customer is uh, double one double seven million. It is a uh, near about one point one seven uh, billion customers are there. Out of this, uh, uh, means uh, six fifty six uh, million is urban, 
and 521 million and customer is a ruler so if we see the compared to the population wise that it where is 65.53 population is there but tally density in rural area is much much lesser than compared to the urban area in urban area it is 142 where is in rural area it is near about 60 so we have to bridge the gap between these two then similarly the internet and data subscriber it is uh, mostly around uh, if we can say 70% is in urban area and total rural area in 30% then internet subscriber per 100 uh, per 100 population it is in urban area it is near about 100% but in rural area it is 32% if we go on the economy of the national income point of view in urban area it is 54% and where is the ruler is 46% and if we go on the literacy point of view in urban area it is 84.1% here in rural area is 67.8 so the purpose of giving such data that uh, mr kuchi has already indicated in his uh, presentation that number of villages in india is around 650000 and number of gram panchayat it is 250000 now at present we have connected on the bharat net whatnet is a project which has been launched by government of india so we have nearly completed around 145000 and out of this near about 80000 we have put up wifi there and uh, as our pm has announced on the 15th august uh, 2020 our uh, independence day that in next 1000 days we have to complete all the villages so it will be a huge uh, plan and we have to take care how we can reach that. then average wireless data uses per wireless data subscriber per month is 11 gb and uh, the, it is the uh, means uh, now it is growing in last 2 3 years if we see it, it was around 6 uh, gb to 11 gb in uh, in 2 years and similarly the average revenue relation per subscriber is uh, per gb is 11.23 so if we convert into dollar it is around 15 cents so 15 cents per gb is the lowest cost in the world now we come to what are the uh, limitations uh, in the uh, connectivity in the rural area so first is that population in the rural area is very small and the population is clusters with vast open area in between then the rural area are mostly low income people are staying so their affordability is very low then terrain is very difficult especially in the hilly areas or far flung area there are some areas in eastern india where we have to reach by foot and it take around 4 to 6 hour to reach roads are not there other infrastructure is not there then high capital expenditure Because we have to reach uh, along with the equipment, and uh, we have to deploy the equipment there. Then, in rural area, that power supply position is uh, not good, so unreliable grid power supply. So we have to depend upon the new or renewable resources, uh, energy resources. Then, similarly, relatively small population density that I have indicated. now what are the challenges in the connecting in the rural uh, india that is the low average revenue per rp because that low affordability the revenue is low so the roi will be less then unavailability of reliable high speed backhaul so that backhaul is not there because it is very difficult to reach in those areas so in, in some places that bsl is working for some areas in left wing extremist area so somewhere we are not able to reach so we are going through satellites then third is already indicated that unreliable power supply so what is the requirement in the rural areas because the rural area the solution wants that it has to be cost effective solution and it has to have very low cost solution and then if low cost solution include the low cost device simpler hardware and rf design reducing the device cost so what uh, india is going to propose that we are uh, developing such type of manufacturing in india uh, under the iddm uh, 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 indian design manufacturing and uh, system we are doing it
So, and uh, uh, to become the self-reliant, we are working on the Art Nirvara Bharat. Then similarly, low-cost connectivity vehicle solution. So we have to utilize the sim, uh, sim, uh, means the means of how we can reduce the cost to reach the uh, vehicles or to reach to the last mile. Then lower spectrum cost. So we have to deploy the solution where the spectrum charges are very less. So we can go with some system like uh, which is the li uh, this license exempting spectrum like. 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz, or 60 gigahertz. So this is the Wi-Fi, and uh, uh, government of India is also working on E-band and B-band, uh, although it is not decided yet. Similarly, that uh, using network sharing option to share a spectrum across the radio axis. So this will also um, means uh, sharing of a spectrum can also reduce the cost to the operator. Then the second uh, is thing. This is the cost solution second is limited mobility support because in india we do not want that mobility is to be very high if the mobility is around six uh, means um, in the range of 60 to 70 kilometer per hour it is more than enough in rural areas then uh, simply uh, similarly that uh, fixed and nomadic primary broadband access is the key factor which is deciding the rural data requirement now then we have to have energy efficient solutions so that uh, the low um, um, power can uh, consumption is there so that lower power consumption we have to have the lowering system energy consumption systems then support for operation in power saving mode whenever our system means uh, our device is not working it can go on the power saving mode so it will consume less power then enabling working of, of non Conventional energy sources like non renewable sources like solar or uh, wind uh, energy, something like that. We have to work on that. Then, large coverage area support. So, the equipment which we are going to deploy in the rural area, it has to have the large coverage. Uh, so, it will certainly reduce the capex as well as OPEX and making use of existing telephone infrastructure. Like for that, reaching to the rural area, we need not to put the uh, infrastructure uh, new one we can utilize the existing uh, infrastructure which have been already developed by the incumbent or means uh, uh, operators for the last 20 years those can be utilized so certainly if we are using those things uh, means uh, our uh, cost will be low then less stringent need based requirement or value innovation then uh, due to uh, the COVID-19 era, the requirement of data has been increased tremendously in the rural area, especially in the field of tele-education, telemedicine, banking financing, agriculture logistics, animal husbandry, and smart electric meters. Now, the requirement which have been proposed in the 3G connectivity, which have not been taken care, because the models uh, have been taken at a high speed vehicle passing through non-urban areas, driverless vehicle, critical uh, surgeries by roommate, very futuristic and away from gaunt reality of the rural and remote areas of the India. So India is not working on the driverless vehicle, driverless vehicle. The reason is that uh, due to the, if we go on the driverless vehicle, then certainly unemployment will increase. So now the key features of the rural data network that we have to have the large coverage area cells to provide unitary uh, connectivity that is LMLC, LC. So low mobility, uh, large coverage that has been developed by the TSTSI and which have been accepted. And it will be a solution where we can, I mean, it is a, a cost effective solution and we can provide services to the our rural area. Then we can deploy Wi-Fi hotspot in the, rural area so that connectivity can be on the radio then we can put some cloud-based uh, architecture virtualized core and secret control uh, center so even a content can be put up in the uh, small uh, that wi-fi hotspots then uh, we can uh, we have to have separate control and data plane and mirror is the population distribution and scale level. so if we go on this uh, we consider on this thing then certainly our system will be very low cost effective as well as it is affordable to the so and 
NCDP, National Digital Communication Policy 2018, Government of India has categorically indicated that we have to put some 2 million Gen, Gen Wi-Fi in the rural Wi-Fi hotspot. So uh, this will enable that rural area uh, that we can reach to them. And uh, means, uh, what are the advantage of this? That each smart device, including mobile phone, is Wi-Fi enabled. So nowadays, most of the Wi means um, the devices are coming the Wi-Fi enabled. Then it is using the unlicensed spectrum. It is uh, in the 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, and we are working on 6 gigahertz also. Similarly, all IP telephony, which is very efficiently and future proof, which is based upon open and ever evolving standard, that is 8.2.1.1x. Uh, then all the ecosystem, whatever coming in the market or in the year, is plug and play ecosystem. Then low power consuming at the low cost, overall infra cost about 15% of the license. Uh, mobile infrastructure, then potential to convert uh, the scare, uh, scarcity of the license spectrum through mobile data offloading or fixed mobile convergence. Then we can go for non interfering or non exclusive, non protected free to all uh, mode. Current uh, hotspot in India is around, nearing around uh, 50,000, uh, 500,000. And the potential to deliver 4G and 5G type services through upgradation. That is, option is already there. Then, ideal futuristic platform for IoT and M2M and e health, e farming, e education. So, Wi Fi to become a part of the 5G ecosystem under release 16 and 17. And in going for summarize, what the uh, means the legacy operators which are working in India, they want that. Uh, we, we have to continue with the 2G, uh, 2G services. The reason is because whatever the 2G system have been deployed, it will work for next two, three, uh, two to three years till the means, uh, deployment of 4G is over and 5G will take around two to three years coming in India. So certainly that wherever the connectivity is there because in, uh, the 2G coverage is very large and most of the people are being, means, um, putting data services there it will be very difficult so that we have want to continue the 2G services. Similarly, that uh, we have to means, uh, close alignment with the PSU like power and telecom so that uh, wherever the power uh, lines are going on, we can put our optical fiber cable there or our um, means telecom system there so that we can have the uh, media as well as the towers. Then we can have the means uh, already in the network we have already NVIOT developed there and uh, the legacy system is already uh, have the means uh, uh, fallback so so that uh, it will be very means, uh, you can say the continuity of 2G certainly will help the rural uh, area so in conclusion I want that uh, the change is more visible in the countries like India for geographic penetration and adaptability of mobile phone is very high compared to other information communication technology and services. The wide penetration of the mobile phone in India is fundamentally because the major constraint for low rural telecity have been lack of investable resources, non-availability of appropriate technology combined with difficult geographic area terrain and contingency size of the country. So thank you from my side. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Uh, it's quite informative and uh, presents the state of the art of the uh, state of the condition of the rural situation much more realistically than what I, I had presented a few minutes ago. Uh, so we will uh, move on with the uh, uh, format of the uh, schedule. And uh, any questions to Mr. Agarwal? We can fill them uh, during the Q&A, if not at the end, we can take this question. Uh, with this, I would like to move on to pose these questions uh, that we have collected. And we go round robin among the uh, among the participants. We have uh, more than uh, 40 minutes for the question, still remaining. And let's begin with the first question.
uh, what is the status of 5G implementation in your country? We just heard uh, several views from India. I would like to go ahead with uh, uh, people from uh, other than uh, uh, India. So let's go ahead with the uh, speaker who have not spoken uh, so far, who is Professor uh, Tarek uh, Rahman. If you would like to comment on the status of the 5G implementation in your country, and then I'll go round robin uh, one after the other. Uh, okay, thank you, Kuji. So I just want to update related to the 5G activities or the preparation for 5G in Malaysia. Uh, we before in the, I think the last year we have done uh, 5G demonstration in one of the state uh, location in Malaysia to demonstrate the capability of the 5G. This is just a demonstration to see what the use cases that 5G can be can do. Uh, uh, with the of the new new that coming and because of the the current what happened uh, during the what you call the uh, current uh, pandemic that trigger the our agency in Malaysia to address the new normal and cater for the future demands. Just to to share with you that mean that what happened that we have the during that time when we have the pandemic uh, current pandemic. Uh, that happened where we can see that there is an increase of traffic of the internet 30 to 70 percent because of the uh, the pandemic uh, and also we can see also that internet usage also moved to mostly moved to residential area which means that we we can see that uh, people are working from home and all those things then then of internet in the residential area increase and also the internet speed reduced because this we see that since the capacity or connectivity is the required, then we see the speed have been affected, and they will see the, a lot of complaints that we uh, they receive uh, because of the slow of the internet and so especially also not only in the urban, of course especially in the rural area. I think with that, I think the government have made some initiative to look back uh, where we have prepared what we call windows, uh, where we are looking into formulation to have quality access digital connectivity nationwide now they are planning to have this action plan where one of the thing is to do is to optimize the existing spectrum used in the current uh, uh, generation like fourth generation and that's why they are planning in Malaysia that currently we are looking into sunsets the 3G so that the spectrum used in 3G will be uh, be can be used by 4G where they have been better quality and better and also we expand the coverage the target now they are we are trying try to achieve is by 2022 to get 96.8 percent of the coverage with 4g and then their aspiration that later we are looking to 100 percent coverage of 4g all these things that we are doing uh, is all other preparation for or foundation for 5g we are planning to get the 5G uh, looking forward for implementation once we have optimized the AC spectrum towards 19, 2022. Uh, and also in terms of the, the fixed networks huh, or in fixed broadband, also the government has also give uh, uh, looking forward to increase the, uh, the fixed broadband like a fiber to uh, extend it to what we call uh, in by 2022, they are looking into about more than 80 percent of that because this is required when you before you move to the four, to the 5g so this is the situation that so what the government is going uh, is doing what in malaysia we are doing we try to optimize the existing spectrum by sunset the 3g because the spectrum used in 3g for example in malaysia we have 900 megahertz and uh, 220, 2100 megahertz they use for 4g and the spectrum that we use by the service provider in the 4G, uh, in the 3G at that spectrum, if we can uh, upgrade it to 4G, then we can get better quality. The aspiration is to get 4G 100% coverage and this set a foundation for 5G because in the 5G, as you know, one of the things that require is to get the, what you call, uh, uh, the uh, what you call the uh, non standalone, eh? where when we have a 4G, then when you want to have a 5G 
we need to have the new radio to be able to get the enhance the broadband is one of the requisite of the uh, 5G. So this is what happened in, in Malaysia now. We are focusing to enhance, to optimize the uh, 4G to get the full coverage and then from there only we can move forward for the 5G. All these things required also to increase the broadband, fiber uh, and also to the premises and this basically set the foundation when before we implement the 5G. So that is what this uh, currently we have in Malaysia. Uh, I will have a few follow-up questions. Uh, uh, there are several questions, but uh, since you are on the topic, are there any specific challenges uh, uh, for giving connectivity to rural areas, like you know, providing fiber or any other challenge? Uh, yes. Okay. There is such challenges because you see some of the fiber or coverage. You can see that most uh, operators they are not really interested or keen to produce the service or coverage in the rural area they are more interested in the commercial area where they have the return in this case in uh, we have some fund that means the government also for the for the uh, rural and remote area where the government providing some funding uh, to the uh, service provider to help them to provide the service so this is the thing that uh, I think that what we are doing, because otherwise it's very difficult. The second thing, the fiber is the challenge that they want to increase the fiber, but in the rural or suburb or rural area, you can see that because the distribution of the houses are quite distributed. So if, for example, in future, when we implement 5G, talking about fiber to premises, the 5G can be one of the solution. We mean meaning that they are they can use uh, fake wireless access to reach the home uh, by using 5G because 5G can have similar to what the fiber can offer where sometimes they refer it as a wireless fiber or air fiber. So this basically can be one of the solution to provide the fiber to the areas where uh, you need to have uh, not in the rural area and so on. And we think that this is very important also the fiber to be those location because by having the 5G services at those locations, we can use, for example, one of the uh, verticals or the new digital healthcare. They can possible to have uh, what you call the uh, remote consultation, where people in the remote area, they can go to the, the clinic there, and then the doctor can be in the city where they can, as if, since you can support the 4K, 8K, as if you are like not in the uh, same place same place so this may be one of the potential if the fiber reach the rural area then this uh, use cases example in the digital healthcare for people in remote area or rural area can benefit from that uh, yet another follow-up question uh, do you have any specific issues with Thailand Thailand in, in I know that Malaysia has a lot of islands, right? Oh, island, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think you get the coverage. The coverage in the island, basically, is one of the solution is that either we can use to link to those islands. For example, in some island, they are not so far from the mainland. You can use this what you call the microwave uh, to link as a backhaul. And other solution, of course, we can have a fiber which is uh, undersea or real fiber. But normally for the Island, which is not so far, we are we can use the microwave, and in the remote area where they are very difficult, maybe the satellite is one of the solution. If you are looking into the, uh, you no know, the the terrestrial or the mobile uh, fiber to reach there, then maybe the satellite is one of the solution. But normally, if that not an issue, we will use the microwave link. Okay. Uh, 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 Kiran, Kiran, please, Jean-Pierre speaking. Could we, yeah. uh, could, we, could we take one or two questions from the chat? Ah, okay. Okay, let's do that because we spent a lot of time talking to each other. Yes, yeah, so uh, just, uh, I will collect just two, two questions from the chat. Uh, a question from uh, for uh, Federico Boccardi. Uh, what is the status of uh, private captive networks for 5G in UK? 
Federico. Okay, okay, thank you, Jean Pierre. The, um, if you give me a second, I'll give you the numbers. I just need to open the right file. So basically, um, yeah, I can give you the last numbers. We we licensed 1.8 um, gigahertz, 2.3 gigahertz, and uh, 3.8, 4.2, and 26 gigahertz for for local use. Uh, for example, at the 3.8, 4.2, we had 19 requests for low power and 15 requests for medium power. Um, for things like uh, test beds, for things like um, uh, network on-site to support enterprise operations, 5G research, um, deployment of radio heads connected to a 5G cell, point to multi-point, um, other research projects. So this is three, three eight four three eight uh, four point two gigahertz. Now on three eight four point two, what I wanted to emphasize is that. Um, we are seeing more uh, terminal support in, in this band. For example, um, this, this be announced that the iPhone 12 is going to be supporting this band. Uh, more at uh, 1.8 gigahertz and 2.3. So for example, at 1.8, we got a total of 800 requests for, um, for, um, uh, for these bands. Um, in terms of research projects, um, there are there are some projects in the context of UK uh, test bed and trials, which is our collaborative projects co-financed by the UK government. And again, there are uh, tests um, of private network solutions using 5G with uh, um, with these um, uh, these spectrum bands. What I wanted to emphasize finally is. We have been involved as Ofcom in speaking to different types of industries uh, around the country. And um, and what we saw is that really there are different types of needs and, and in particular for those businesses that don't have the capabilities to, to, uh, to do it alone. We, we need also to think that private networks is not the only solution. We need to think about different solutions from a connectivity and cloud perspective ranging from using public networks, using a slice of public networks, using a third party provided and providing it yourself. Uh, so that understanding these different business models and providing enablers for these different business models was particularly important to enable the largest number of people and companies and enterprises organizations to, to deliver this type of networks. So private network is only one of the solutions thank you uh, federico and uh, thank, thanks a lot and perhaps a, a, a second question from uh, from the chat from the audience uh, what are the challenges in terms i suppose of physical challenges of 5g deployment in hilly and terrain rural areas perhaps uh, brito could you give a first uh, response to that Yes, uh, I, I, I think that the, 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 the more important challenge is, is, is the, the range of the connection. Uh, as I said in my presentation, uh, if you look to the, the Brazilian scenario, we need uh, at least uh, 50 uh, kilometers far from the, the, the base station uh, to, to provide a connection in 5G. Of course, the, the propagation in, in, in some in some kind of, of terrain is 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 uh, a technical uh, challenge uh, also. Uh, in terms of, of physically, I think is is that I, I cannot see any any other challenge. Thank you, uh, Brito. Perhaps another uh, another panelist could uh, could give. Uh, a response for that, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Tarek Abdraman. Yes, I think yes. I think the one of the okay, maybe in the remote area to get the coverage or the the fiber to go, they say is quite a challenge. That's why I think 
uh, is potent. We have, so for example, like already mentioned earlier, the wireless fiber, or if you have a 5G, you can utilize, uh, you know, the wireless has part of the uh, fiber to, to the those premises. And maybe some location where you still have uh, problems with that, you can have other alternative by using the satellite. For example, where 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 we can see, even we know that satellite is limited in the broadband process uh, or the uh, connectivity. Thank you, thank you, uh, Doctor Tarek. Uh, so, Kiran, I let you uh, the floor now to go on uh, with the panel. Yeah. Um we have about 20 minutes probably left uh, there is one topic we have not yet uh, touched upon uh, we'll do that then we'll come back uh, on this issue of uh, remote uh, coverage and uh, um, uh, uh, remote areas uh, unserved areas what is the role of satellite in this uh, in this uh, in this technology so i would like to collect some views on the usage of satellite based systems uh, shall we uh, uh, start with uh, uh, maybe Ofcom, and then we will go around Robin. Sure. So uh, uh, different aspects to consider in, in the short to to medium and long term. Clearly, in the, in the short term, satellite uh, uh, ever already today uh, in the UK, in particular, to to provide um, second link, for example, for reliability reasons um, in, in areas that are difficult to reach. More into the medium to long term, clearly uh, there is a chance for satellites to, to play a major role, and particularly thinking about uh, um, LEO constellations and uh, uh, large constellations with a large number of satellites that are able to provide a uh, lower latency. Um, which could be used for, for different uh, use cases. I'm aware, for example, of uh, satellites used for BACO. Uh, some satellite companies are thinking to serve directly mobile devices and, and IoT services as well. So as, as often we are monitoring all of these and we are speaking, working with satellite companies to understand the impact for coverage in rural areas in uh, in particularly in, in, in the medium to long term however more broadly and, and going to the long term uh, is is that there are two two aspects in thinking about satellites and more generally uh, aerial networks one is improving coverage to the earth from satellites and other aerial networks the other one is and this is more a question than, a, than, than an answer is, do we need to think in the future about covering the sky in addition to cover, cover the air? So it's going to, now we're speaking about 2D coverage problems in rural areas, and maybe in the future we need to think about 3D coverage because we also need to cover these uh, aerial platforms in the sky as well. So these are the type of thinking we're doing at the moment in Ofcom related to a satellites, but also other area platforms, for example, uh, drones. Yeah. So on the same note, I would like to ask, uh, is there any established position of Ofcom uh, with respect to 3GPP work items of uh, uh, any anything related to SATCOM or LEO, GEO, including drones? Is there a stated position? Of course, you just mentioned something, but I would like to know something specific to 3GPP releases. We are monitoring. We are monitoring with 3GPP wars. We are not taking any position on, on 3GPP, but we are definitely monitoring the, the works. And then we think that hybrid architectures, including satellites, there are an important, possibly an important enablers for connectivity in the future. Okay, uh, I would like to go and ask uh, our op opinion from BSNL. Uh, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, what do you think of uh, satellite coverage, especially LEO uh, based uh, and geo based satellite coverage coming up, including IoT, uh, for uh, Northeast, uh, Himalayas, and rural areas in general? Yes, yes. 
so what uh, is the thing i have discussed with the isro and they are uh, they have indicated that in the present scenario they have put up the satellite under geo so in geo there are so many satellites and especially now for uh, that high throughput satellite they have put up uh, gsat uh, 19 gsat 11 and gsat uh, 21 uh, 29 29 11 and 9, uh, 19 so in that satellite we they can provide high beam support but in the leo satellite at present there is a not, uh, no means a satellite has been launched by the isro for communication purpose it is only for the purpose of uh, uh, some other purpose not for the communication so um, but uh, that uh, geo satellites are reaching uh, every nook and corner of the india and uh, they have the bandwidth cost is also reduced compared to earlier one although it is um, uh, costlier compared to means microwave or terrestrial communication but uh, certainly that means uh, satellite uh, is very good for the uh, means remote and hilly areas and island areas so um, this is the view yeah sir uh, it may not be your may not be the right person to uh, ask this question but anyway i'll ask go and ask you or uh, what is the position of bsnl or rather preference with respect to allowing private satellite uh, operators if at all indian government uh, liberalizes this 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 uh, uh, privatization of the space uh, rather uh, giving private people access to uh, satellite communication do you think bsnl is uh, is considering any such uh, plans See, BSNL consider the plan what is the uh, approval given by the DOT. So I present that uh, ISRO has issued the policy for the private satellite, and as the uh, deployment of the private satellite comes and uh, the government allows, certainly we will go for the low cost model, uh, so low cost solution to provide the telecom services. Okay, so uh, Kiran, Kiran, sorry, uh, Jean-Pierre speaking. If you allow me, uh, I would just uh, go on on one or two uh, chat questions. Yeah, please. Uh, go. I will go uh, for uh, for uh, uh, ja uh, uh, for uh, Jaspreet and Sandeep. Uh, a question on uh, uh, rural connectivity and primary. What could be primary on your point of view? primary applications in rural areas uh, in various countries represented by panelists but also of course uh, in india so just read please what primary applications in rural areas do you see yeah uh, i have seen uh, many applications uh, uh, that rural people are using so uh, to to express this i would like to uh, quickly add uh, at one moment uh, uh, it, it was a social experiment i have put one access point uh, wifi access point in one gram panchayat in the rural area and uh, uh, it's open and no security was there and allow people to connect to it and uh, so people connected and you know they use uh, uh, drives they use movies they used to watch movies and uh, some updates uh, google app updates and all that facebook social uh, media Uh, social uh, website so i think uh, quite a lot of usage we have seen and uh, in 15 days around uh, 100 uh, around 125 gb of data has been utilized by the uh, by the rural people so uh, there is a huge massive de demand and uh, uh, and uh, th this includes uh, using watching youtube videos uh, social media websites and uh, and movies yeah so that's the primary usage in the rural areas which you have seen uh, plus banking nowadays uh, financial activities are also uh, i mean uh, at the boom so uh, digital transactions are even happening uh, uh, we have uh, many payments apps like paytm google pay and uh, others so i think uh, these are one of the uh, top most used applications uh, from the rural areas yeah Thank you, uh, Jaspreet, and uh, you, Sandeep, uh, Sandeep Agarwal, on your point of view for this question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, with respect to rural use uh, uh, in respect to 5G technology, if we talk, so uh, of course the general internet uses is increasing in rural areas. But there are two, you know, important use cases. Speak a bit closer to the microphone, please. Yeah, two, 
very important use case which i see where we will find 5g use case is uh, of course e health because that is something which uh, we uh, may not be able to solve with uh, existing technology altogether and second i understand uh, the huge case in farming because uh, when we see uh, the crop production is going to the demand will going to double in coming 10 to 15 or 20 years because as the population is decreasing so can we you know use 5g technology to you know enhance or increase the productivity if such use case can be you know really achieved using 5g technology at what we are talking will be something very important in the rural area apart from that i see you know uh, maybe if we have a better 4g coverage itself in the villages or you know we can augment the coverage with wi-fi that may you know meet our requirement for maybe coming five to ten years but some of the very critical requirement of farming and health i think we should focus more uh, using 5g as a technology to solve those thank you uh, thank you sandeep uh, i turn now back to you kiran uh, with uh, a yeah. question from a question from the chat and also a sort of complimentary question i had asked you what stops tsdsi rit to get included in 3gpp release 17. oh the uh, uh i think that uh, the enhancements uh, that are introduced in 3gpp rit uh, are designed to meet a specific purpose that is uh, rural coverage enhancement and certain technological solutions have been demonstrated and uh, i think that uh, there is nothing that prevents 3gpp to adopt these uh, technologies and implement them in the devices the vendors uh, facilitate the vendors to implement it in a timely fashion if not uh, uh, in six months but in a, in a in a in a time scale that can be worked out i think that uh, there is every reason uh, for 3gpp to absorb these technological uh, contributions uh, from TSDSI and uh, and solve this issue. It's quite possible. There's nothing that is stopping, let me put it this way. Thank you, uh, thank you, Kiran. And perhaps the last question from uh, from the floor, it's uh, from our uh, colleague, uh, Andrea Zomer from uh, the EU uh, India uh, uh, ICT Standards uh, Corporation uh, project. So, uh, power backup power uh, concepts for a growing number of towers with 5g facing the power outages facing uh, perhaps not uh, uh, only in india also in africa batteries solar panel theft so uh, what could be the power backup power concept for this growing number of towers with a uh, with 5G. So who could uh, respond to that? Perhaps uh, Brito? Is Brito still there? Perhaps. Oh, sorry, sir. He lost connection, Mr. Brito. Is not on I, he, he lost connection. Perhaps uh, BSNL? Mr. Agrawal? Yes, yes. So, as I indicated in my proposal, that uh, as the number of tower increases, certainly we need to have more power and uh, or more reliable power. So we can utilize the non-reliable energy sources, especially solar power, is will be the best solution, where we can have the means, uh, storage of power around 72 hours. Presently, BSNL is using such uh, things in our left extremist. Uh, means areas where we are providing the services without commercial power from last five years so that is a case which i have already we have been dealt and is a, it is a proven so this will be the solar power with the best solution for the, such area although we will have the in urban areas 5g we have the commercial power for backup we can have solar 
Thank you, Mr. Agrawal. So, Kiran, I give you back uh, the floor. Yeah, so I would like to leave the floor open for an open discussion instead of me asking the questions. I think uh, let the panelists uh, uh, ask questions to each other, any other unresolved questions, as well as questions from uh, the audience. Let's keep it open for next five minutes or so. Uh, yes, I have a question uh, to Mr. Barkari from Ofcom. I just want to know uh, why the setup of peak wireless access application for 5G in UK? Sorry, uh, the status of which type of applications? Uh, FWA, fixed wireless ah, access. FWA, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are some of the operators who have started to use FWA for, uh, for wireless applications. There are also um, small operators that are deploying FWA either with 4G or, or, or other technologies over share bands share bands uh the 384.2 for example in, in rural areas we are working with them to understand the, the the status but i cannot share this information with you now it's gonna go it's gonna be published in december uh this year as a part of the connected national report so in the next weeks we will be able to share some some detailed information about it Uh, just Jean-Pierre speaking, thank you, Federico. Balaji, Balaji uh, Rangaswamy, co-chair, would you have uh, a question to, to the panel? Yes, thanks, thanks Jean-Pierre. So uh, uh, we had a lot of discussion on uh, IG focused on cellular technology, a um, little bit on Wi-Fi focused on radio access. Uh, but I wanted to ask uh, Sandeep, since CDOT does a lot of R&D within the country, um, is there any uh, work happening on an end-to-end -end architecture uh, for rural connectivity, uh, considering both 5G and Wi-Fi, and uh, whether any initiatives to take architecture to standardization? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Balaji. So uh, yes, so along with uh, you know uh, the the ongoing work of LML, LMLC. Uh, in TSTSI, we have uh, you know initiated a work to define you know rural broadband architecture. So this is the joint effort by multiple you know industry partners, where you know we are trying to see what are the existing infrastructure and now the recent requirement of connecting uh, the six lakh villages from the GP. So in this particular reference architecture, which we are trying to build at TSTSI. Uh, we are trying to explore, uh, you know, multiple heterogeneous technologies uh, along with, uh, you know, multiple technology like TV white space, EVAN, VVAN, 5.8 gigahertz, you know, outdoor. And also trying to focus on certain use case, including IoT, uh, to see, you know, how, uh, you know, holistic architecture, uh, which can be deployed uh, in rural India, including uh, all possible heterogeneous technology. Uh, including 5G, 4G, or even Wi-Fi, uh, to meet our uh, immediate requirement, which I understand, you know, uh, primary voice and also, you know, to data, and then, you know, moving forward to uh, high bandwidth data. So that is the one work which uh, is being driven at TSDSI. Apart from that, there are a uh, few other works, you know, driven by India in IEEE forum. That is one is P2061 that we call it frugal 5g where you know we are taking care of low mobility energy efficient and affordable broadband along with that there is another work p2872 where we are trying to build you know uh, interoperable and secure public wi-fi architecture so uh, these are you know some of the works uh, which has been driver, driven toward standardization for the rural connectivity but the work which, uh, you know, uh, defining the reference architecture at THDSI, that is something, you know, which we are trying to uh, come up in the coming days. Thank you, uh, Sandeep Balaji. A last question, or is it okay for you? Yes, uh, thank you. Just one more question, if I may, to just Yes, Yes, please, quick. 
Yes, so uh, we, we have looked at uh, traditional architectures, uh, which are also driven by business models. Uh, Mr. Nagarwal uh, presented the past challenges. We've discussed about power and connectivity. Um, are there any other alternate connectivity schemes or models uh, uh, that, that could be applied to solving the problem of uh, connecting the remote areas? Regarding alternate, there are so many number of uh, means uh, technologies uh, are means we have to develop uh, so technology that it can be connected instead of uh, uh, normally in microwave we are using the single hop so if we can can be mesh connected or multi hoping so certainly we can reach to the uh, more areas otherwise uh, if uh, Nothing is working, then ultimately satellite is the solution where we can reach. But um, as it has been already indicated that private satellite players are coming to India. And if they come, so they have already deployed their network in the LEO. So certainly that um, uh, more number of satellites are there. And we can reach uh, to those areas where we are not able to reach through fiber or any uh, microwave. So we can reach on the LEO. So these are the technologies available. However, the when the uh, ultimately technology comes, then uh, market forces decided this technology has to work and which architecture has to work. Yeah, I would like to add one more point uh, to Mr. D.K. Agarwal. Uh, like we have seen uh, other uh, technologies, like the mix of technology, which we always say, uh, and call it as a frugal 5G, uh, wherein we have tested the uh, TV wide space band also uh, in connecting the rural remote areas and the combination of uh, 5.8 and 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, this is uh, these are the available other uh, available uh, mix of technologies which can uh, lead to the rural and remote connectivity. Yeah, thank you. Kiran, who can respond there? Yeah, uh, is there a question for me? Ja just Preet, was there? Was it a question or just a, a compliment of uh, opinion from your side? Yeah, it was uh, on this opinion uh, to the questions of Mr. Balaji uh, asked about what other technologies are available to connect the room. So it's the question of the mix of technology. It was an additional information, whatever I even provide. Yeah. So uh, I think we had a very engaging discussion, but I would like to pose one last question to all the all the people here. Uh, what is the preference or the opinion of uh, using uh, 4G or 5G as a backhaul and uh, and put a CPE on a lamp post and uh, provide coverage using Wi-Fi? for rural areas. So in the absence of fiber, is this something uh, of, is this something of relevance or interest? I just want to collect opinions. Who can uh, respond? Shall I respond? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ms. I think Dr. Tarek and Dr. Yeah. Dr. both are interested in responding. We okay. can go, uh, yes, yeah. So okay. As indicated that uh, lamp post areas are uh, very less in the rural areas compared to urban area. So means uh, in rural, uh, rural area we have to uh, means how we will repeat it means uh, we will be finding the lamp post uh, because whatever the uh, means uh, transmission towers are there for the means, uh, uh, power transmission uh, where they can we can put uh, our micro system or we can put the uh, um, optical fiber but uh, uh, it will be difficult to find the lamp post in those areas in the means as per the requirement that is my view yes, uh, but, uh, but, but if we are able to reach uh, if we are finding them certainly we can put our network there. i see uh, dr agrawal uh, just uh, just a comment from my side from uh, and uh, on, on the importance uh, as we stress in europe for instance but as it was stressed also last year at the conference of uh, Broadband India Forum by Mr. T. V. Ramachandran, on yeah. the important important role of uh, uh, fixed and fiber optics for 5G, uh, and notably for backhaul, 
And I think uh, it's important to have in mind that uh, fiber optics uh, for a 5G backhaul uh, could be of a high importance. Yes, I, I fully agree with you. I see, I see. Yes. And uh, let's... Uh, because uh, for 5G, means even for 4G, we need minimum 50 MB bandwidth, 15 MB, 200 MB bandwidth. And for 5G, I need minimum 1G. So if I am not able to, means 1G can be reached only by fiber. Uh, that is a, means a best available solution and cheap solution. I yes. see. Um, there is also a willingness to answer this question from uh, uh, Professor Tarek. Uh, you have something to say? Okay, okay. Because uh, when you're looking into that, uh, you say that the, you're using CPE and the backhaul is using 5G or 4G. But my uh, my opinion is that to for, for 5G, you need really to have a fiber to be connected to the towers. But if you can have a 4G coverage, uh, because 4G can have the, to the tower, it can be through microwave. And if you can have 4G coverage, which can have better, then you can use CPE to provide the Wi-Fi. Otherwise, and then another application that I refer in the remote area that we are already mentioned is on quick wireless access. If you have a fiber in one location, you can use 5G at those, that location to provide the last mile. I mean, the extension from, from the tower that having the fiber. So otherwise, you need to have a 4D because 4D can also give a good, uh, uh, I mean, the capacity for that location, and and those location maybe some pools or any location or in house you can have a Wi-Fi connected as a CPE to provide the internet access to that local location. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Brito, please. Okay. Brito. Now I'm back. Uh, I have a, a, a connection problem. I have some experience here uh, uh, with the the, the 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 last question. I have developed a solution based on uh, LTE uh, to provide uh, connectivity to to, to very uh, big farms. Then we 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 have the the, the LTE in in the back hall in the farm, and then we distribute the, the the connection using Wi-Fi to the machinery in the field. And also our, our, our 5G solution uh, use uh, Wi-Fi to distribute the, 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 the connection because it's a proprietary uh, solution and we don't have a, a commercial uh, mobile terminal. Then you have a, a, a nomadic terminal and we, we distributed the, 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 the connection uh, to, the, to the machinery in the farms uh, using uh, Wi-Fi. Interesting. Thank you, uh, Brito. Uh, Kiran, uh, I think as chair, uh, perhaps we, we 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 are at the end. Uh, do you do you wish to? Uh, we could uh, before giving you the floor and Balaji for uh, giving your insights of of this uh, session. I will on my uh, on my side uh, thank all our speakers for their very complimentary uh, presentations and comments and questions, and also thank uh, the audience with a chat. We try to respond to all the questions. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this is a very important topic, uh, and we will have uh, some follow-ups in the coming uh, two or three years. Uh, so Kiran and uh, and Balaji uh, as uh, co-chairs, uh, could you? Uh, I give you the floor for your insights of this uh, very passion. Yeah, thank you, uh, Balaji. You have some remarks uh, before I close. Yes, thanks, Kiran. Uh, very briefly, I would like to. Echo what uh, Jean Pierre said. Uh, very interesting session. It was uh, wonderful to listen to all the presenters from different regions. Um, quite a learning uh, experience. And one of the things that uh, I realized is that there are. It's good to see that there is so much focus on rural and applications and enabling connectivity. And uh, it's very good to see that there are different ways of addressing the problem. A mix of cellular and Wi-Fi. Um, spectrum as presented by uh, Federico, um, the, the technology parts that you presented and Brito presented. Um, and there is there is quite a lot of uh, work happening, which is very nice to see. Uh, and I echo Jean-Pierre in saying thanks to all the all the participants for their uh, participation and sharing their insights. Thanks, Kiran and Jean-Pierre for giving the opportunity. Yeah. So uh, I think that, thank you, Balaji. Uh, thank you, Jean-Pierre. Uh, I think that we have reached the end of the session. It was uh, mo it was the most engaging session. Uh, 
very diverse views have been exchanged uh, uh, and uh, i really thank uh, john pierre and balaji to who have uh, um, helped us with this uh, moderation as well as organizing the entire session thanks to you know bindu for the you know excellent organization and the support staff and uh, all the foreign uh, non india participants uh, with the different time zones uh, we appreciate the time you have taken to uh, come here and uh, provide the most important views on this uh, subject and also the you know participants uh, coming out of india who are missing their dinner time and patiently gave us uh, valuable uh, insights both you know jaspreet and uh, uh, mr agarwal and uh, sandeep uh, thank you all and i would like to close this session uh, thank you uh, with thank you thank you very much okay bye bye thank you bye bye thank you bye bye you bye bye thank you so much all the panelists and also the chair persons uh, for such a lovely panel discussion session and yes thank you so much all the attendees who have been staying back and uh, encouraging the uh, our panelists and also asking so many questions and there was quite an interesting session i would say and uh, see you all tomorrow at 4:50 pm so you can log in try to log in by 4:30 pm so that uh, if you have any issues in login you can get it sorted out and you would start the session by 4:50 thank you so much have a great time good night all or uh, good morning or good afternoon good evening which of the country you are bye bye thank you to the bye bye you should be open for a while uh, those who want to network once the session is closed you can still keep networking in the social launch and we'll be displaying the time at the, at what time the social launch is going to be closed it will be uh, displayed in the chat box thank you so much thank you to the host bye bye thank you sir